read the extract below. Anchovy is a type of fish found in the Pacific Ocean. During the breeding season, the males and females gather in large group. The females are going to release over and the males semen into the water. And those eggs or the ova are going to float around and the semen is going to fertilize them and the little zygotes or the eggs float in the water and inside that egg embryonic development is going to occur until hatching. So that's our one situation. The northern pikefish is found mainly in rivers. So there we've got a difference, ocean and rivers. During the breeding season, the female releases thousands of ova and the male releases semen all around the female. So here we've got our little female fish and she is producing thousands of ova and the male fish is going to swim around the female releasing sperm as he moves around her. The fertilized eggs attach to vegetation because this is a river, it's not a deep, deep, deep ocean. These are not just floating in the water. They attach to vegetation near the river bed, so at the bottom of the river, and the same thing, embryonic development until hatching. And now we have a graph showing the survival rate of both of these fish. The survival rate of the embryos is shown on the y-axis and on the independent variable x-axis we've got time in days. And we see that one fish indicated by graph x has a higher survival rate of their embryos than the other fish. So we've unpacked all the information that the question has told us. Now we start answering that question. Name the type of fertilization that takes place in both of these fish species. Name, we just have to give the term and it's mentioned in both examples, releasing over and semen into the water, releasing over and releasing semen into the water. In other words, the semen is not introduced into the body of the female. What do we call that kind of fertilization? All we have to do is name it. That is external fertilization. Don't just write external, write the whole uh, term out external fertilization. There's our mark. Explain why both fish species are oviparous. And now it's not just name, it's explain. What we mean by oviparous is both of these fish lay eggs and the eggs are going to develop or the embryo is going to develop in the eggs outside of the female body. So if you just said both of these fish species lay eggs, that's going to get you one mark. The consequence of laying eggs is that the female doesn't have a role in the development of the fetus. The development of the fetus actually takes place outside her body. She can swim off and carry on her life and the development of the fetus is going to be restricted to what's happening inside that egg outside of her body. Remember this was an explain, not just a name. Look at your mark allocation and unpack that question a little bit. Describe two ways in which the chances of fertilization are increased in the northern pikefish. So we've got to look for two ways that show that the fertilization is going to be increased. Let's go back to our 
description of the northern pike. All right, now we're looking for, for two ways that's going to increase the chances of fertilization. And here's the first way. The female releases ova and the male releases the semen all around the female. So the, the semen and the ova are not just released at random. It's almost like the male is targeting this female with her ova. So that is one of our reasons. And here's another reason for an increased chance at fertilization, thousands of ova, not just a couple. So there's our second reason for increased fertilization. Look at the question. It asked for increases in the chances of fertilization. At the back of your mind, you're thinking also, oh, hold on, those little eggs are attached to vegetation, so they're not going to uh, be carried away by water currents. But that's not talking about fertilization. That's talking about later on. We want to know about the chances of fertilization. So you're going to write here about the male releasing sperm around the female. You might even want to show your examiner that you know that it's that point. Underline around the female. And the second reason is that that female is producing thousands of ova. And these two ways are going to increase the chance of fertilization. Which graph, X or Y, represents the survival rate of the northern pike fish embryos? Go back here, we've got graph X and graph Y. This here on the Y axis is survival rate. And we see here that which one has increased survival rate? It's graph X, which is the pike fish. Explain your answer. Graph X was the graph that had the highest survival rate. And when we're looking at things like attaching the developing eggs to vegetation, the male swimming around the female, the thousands of ova, all of this points to a higher survival rate. So the highest survival rate is going to be the pike fish. And on the graph, that line, if we trace that line back to the y-axis, it's at a higher level, it's got a higher survival rate.